Let me show you the details. I'm going to take you back, all the way back to last Monday. This is following the bombings. The bombings. The Saudi national was taken into custody in the hospital after being injured in the blast. So, first thing we have to learn here is this Saudi national was close enough to the blast to be hurt. Number one. Then, two, not one, but two FBI sources used the term in custody. They didn't say he was being questioned. We were going to visit him. We were bringing him flowers. They say he was in custody. That evening, while he was in custody, authorities spend nine hours searching his Revere, Massachusetts apartment, which is definitely not in Finley, Ohio. And they also seized property. Now, I just want you to remember, unless this president has all of a sudden just said, we're going to suspend the Constitution entirely for everybody, not just Tea Party members, that means if they went to search it, that means while he was in custody at the hospital, the FBI had to go to a judge and say, we believe, for what reason, we believe this guy was involved, we need to go search his house, and we need to talk to his roommate for several hours. Watch. What's, What's his, his name? name? Uh, who is your, your friend? friend. Your friend was in the I can't give any When's the last time you saw your friend, Mohammed? When was the last time he was in the apartment with you? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, they talked to me outside. Absolutely. It was like five hours there with the bullets. Five, five hours. hours. Five hours. Five hours. Now let me take you to the next day. This is Tuesday morning. This is the day after the bombing. It's 10 a.m. Secretary, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry happens to meet with a Saudi foreign minister. And all of a sudden, the doors are closed. No one from the media is allowed in. Oh, okay. Well, let's not get sidetracked on the, the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia. Let's go back, remember what they were doing. What were they doing? They were searching his house, okay? Then, around noon, they had to go and they had to bring all the evidence that they had, and they brought it at a place called the NCTC. That's the National Counterterrorism Center. So they're there for a while. Now it's four o'clock Tuesday afternoon. The, the, um, the National Counterterrorism Center issues what's called an event file. This is an enormous deal. It's part of the Patriot Act. It calls for the deportation of, um, of an individual using Section 2123B in the Patriot Act. This file was created by the N NCTC field watch commander at 4 o'clock. That was after an all-night search of the guy who was in custody, an all-night search, five hours of questioning, and what was described then as a relentless multi-hour inquiry from a federal panel saying, why are you going to make this guy a 3B? Why are you going to do that? It's enormous to get somebody tagged as a 2123B. The Saudi was then, by 4 o'clock the afternoon, tagged as a 3B. Designation, foreign national engaged in terrorist activity. Now, who was it that tagged him as a 3B? You see, this is a very big deal. Difficult to charge someone. You need solid evidence. It has to be almost certain evidence. If any agency uh, that is part of the NCTC disagrees and says, I, I don't think that's accurate. It cannot be applied. So everybody of the panel, they all agreed. Huge burden of proof. It's the equivalent of charging you or me with premeditated murder and seeking the death penalty. It's not something you do and then go, oh, yeah, I forgot I was wrong. But just around then, don't forget the meeting with the Saudis, the FBI starts to backtrack from the suspect. It's not a suspect. He wasn't in custody. What, did we say that? No, he's just a person of interest. To, well, he's a witness for sure. He is a sad victim to, I swear to you, this is where they are today. I, I don't even know who you're talking about. Who? Next week, or last week, Wednesday, 1.16 p.m. You remember this because it was stunning. CNN reports a dark-skinned male was arrested. Look at this. 
And I'm told I want to be very careful about this because people get very sensitive when you say these things. I was told by one of these sources who was a law enforcement official uh, that this was a dark-skinned male. Uh, the official used some other words. I'm not going to repeat them until right. we get more information. Because of the yeah. sensitivities, there are Whatever. some people who will take offense we, even at saying that. And the I reason why, that, if you remember watching that show, the reason why I was so upset about it is because I know who this guy was by that time. I knew that that's re that report, I can't guarantee, I, I, I didn't call John and ask him, but I know that report was most likely this guy, fingered by the FBI. Two reporters at CNN received the, received the same information, Fran, Fran Townsend and John King. First of all, these guys have solid sources, uh, and I've worked at CNN. They don't say brown skin guy. They don't tag that guy without, are you sure? In fact, look what John King tweeted right after his now infamous dark skin man report. He tweeted this, quote, source of that description was a senior government official, senior government official. And I asked, are you sure? But I'm responsible when I am not is a racist. I wonder if John King and Fran Townsend are grilling the sources now. Hey, have you guys seen what the Blaze is reporting? What happened there? What changed after you were sure the suspect was dark skin? I wonder if John and Fran, if they've brought this report and said, did you, did you set me up to look like a racist because you couldn't carry the water? And you were too freaked out to tell me when they told you up above, bury it. Also on Wednesday, the president had a chance encounter with another Saudi. In fact, two. The Saudi foreign minister, Saad, and the Saudi ambassador. What are the odds? He just popping in to say hi. Then at 5 p.m., a press conference in Boston is canceled. It's canceled because of a bomb scare. Then at 535, the event file you remember the one that took all those hours to create? All of a sudden, it's relabeled. The Saudi National 3B altered. This is unheard of. Given the timeline, impossible to change that fast given the severity of the charge. Impossible. The order to deport rescinded. This guy just simply disappears. The only, only the State Department, senior officials, or the NCTC could order that change. I wonder if we know who it was. The next day, Janet Napolitano testifies before the House Homeland Security Committee. She says there's no Saudi national that is being deported or was even thought about being deported. Watch. I am unaware of anyone who is being deported for national security concerns at all related to Boston. I don't know where I'm not that saying it's related to Boston. Uh, it was, it says on the report, related to the Boston bombing. But why quibble over facts? She is not aware. Same day, DHS and ICE tell the media that there are two Saudi nationals. And it's, it's not the one that was hospitalized for injuries. He's a victim. He's a victim, okay? The other one that we can't tell you about, he's in custody and he was going to be deported. Mm -hmm. Now, some more exclusive details. Let's put that back up. We'd sure like others to report on it. Congressman Duncan has detailed information about the Saudi national event file, along with other members of the House Homeland Security Committee. And they've sent a formal letter of request, which we have a copy of, and we've posted up at the blaze for a classified briefing on the Saudi national and the deportation order. Don't screw with them. They know. My guess is no one will come to meet with them because they're no longer afraid of Congress. Next exclusive. This isn't the first time that this guy has had an event file started on him. No, this is the second one. The first one happened before the bombing, before April 15th. But the crazy thing is, where's that other file now? You see, there's all kinds of tags that says, see other file, but where is that file now? Here's the other fact to consider. On January 14th, 2013, this last January, President Obama met with the Saudi Minister of Interior. Really? And then just two days after that, Janet Napolitano decides to put Saudi Arabia on the trusted traveler list. Well, that sounds nice. What is it? Well, there are three countries on that list so far. There's, uh, there's Canada, there's South Korea, and Mexico. You see, they've gone through uh, background checks. 
So the security checks are greatly reduced for anyone in that program. So if you're from Mexico, you've been to Mexico, you've been to Canada, you're just like, yeah, that's me, and you walk on through. How does Saudi Arabia get to be on the same list? Saudi Arabia, 15 of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 were from Saudi Arabia. How do they get on the trusted traveler list? Germany and France aren't even on it. Israel, Israel has, is waiting to get on the list, but nobody will sign the paperwork. The truth is something has been going on with Saudi Arabia and America that the American public doesn't know about. This week we will tell you all about it. Over 140 Saudi nationals were whisked out of America on private jets right after the 9-11 attacks. You know this. The information was kept hidden until finally being admitted to by the Bush administration three years later. So why does Saudi Arabia's interest trump America's during times of national security crisis when you can't fly? How come the Saudis can? Why doesn't the media care? Tonight, tonight, I'm not going to give you my answer. But I believe you should demand one. Back in a minute.